Hello, hello. Welcome to another in the studio. I have something I want to share with you. So I'm working on this track here. I feel like I've been working on it forever, but I'm in the, the later stages of the mix down. And I felt like the hats and shakers, the top end of my drums just was lacking a little something. I just wanted to give it a little lift. So I could have, you know, just kicked up my hat group here, which has all my shakers and hats going to it. I could have kicked that up by a half dB or dB, but I'm really happy with the overall balance of the track. So I didn't really want to do that. I thought I would try some parallel processing instead. I usually find I get better, more interesting results when I go that route. So I'm just, I want to walk you through this auxiliary track here. So for right now, I have the dry signal muted. So all we're listening to is this auxiliary track. So I'm going to go through these plugins one by one. So the first thing I did was just roll off everything below 5k ish. I just wanted the very top end sizzle. Okay, easy enough. So I followed that with this pool tech EQ. So when I want to, or if I'm looking to boost frequencies, especially a heavy boost, then I prefer to go with a vintage style EQ like the pool tech here or EQs uh, emulated on the Neve or the Harrison EQs or the Mag EQ is another great one. I think Plugin Alliance makes a great emulation of this too. Another good one for boosting high ends and sounds. But anyways, I prefer to use a, a vintage model of EQ like the Pool Tech. I feel like it gives a more musical, natural sound and you can push the boost a little harder, I think, and still get good results. So that's what I did. Um, I just selected 16 kilohertz here as a frequency, kicked up the bandwidth slightly, and then you can hear that as I kick it in, and a, a generous boost here. Hear that? Um, and also this plugin gives a, a slight touch of color as well, which I quite like. So I thought it was a perfect candidate for the job. And then I followed that with this reverb here. So this is a technique that I've mentioned briefly a couple times. If I want to give something just a little touch of ambience, and a little bit of space, but I don't want a decay tail interfering with other sounds and kind of clogging the mix, then I'll, I'll kind of give it this sparkle reverb. And the two things that you need for this is a high early reflection amount and a low decay. So I pushed the early reflections up all the way to 100% and the decay is all the way down. And so I'll let you listen to this. I'm gonna push this up. This gives a nice little, nice little sparkle. Puts it in a, a space, but you don't get the decay tail interfering with other sounds. And then of course you can dial in the size and the, the filters and, and whatnot, but those are the two things that you need for this type of reverb high early reflections and a very low decay. So I thought that was nice because it, I wanted to put um, this auxiliary track um, in, in a slightly different space. So I thought that subtle sparkle reverb um, was, was nice. So I'm gonna push this back to where I had it right around 20% or so. I, I've even used this on bases subtly. Um, so maybe you can try it out. Okay, so let's listen to this with the actual dry signal here. Okay, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. So you can notice here 
that I swap the left and the right channel. So I'm going to switch this back to normal and let you listen to this. And here it's kind of congested and I feel like things are, are, are trying to fight each other for space. But when you swap the left and the right channels, it just sits much more comfortably, I think. Yeah. And that's something I do, like say, um, a lot of times I'll take like a synth part or an ARP or something, and then I'll make a copy of it. I'll like heavily filter it, maybe detune it slightly, run it through some different reverb, like a different reverb and delay, and kind of layer that in underneath the, the main sound, um, just to add some, some texture and additional movement or whatever. And a lot of times on layers like that, I'll do the same thing. I'll swap the left and the right channel so it kind of mirrors the original sound. Um, I, I actually do that occasionally. So I thought I would share that with you. So let's just listen to them together and pull this back to a more reasonable level. But it was just enough. to bring the hats out in a really nice, pleasant way. And I didn't even need a lot of it, you know, maybe 15, 20% in the mix did the trick. So that's it, wanted to share that with you. Parallel EQ, um, it could really, you know, give your hats that little extra something something. So that's it, take care everyone, I'll catch you soon.